Cardano and Ethereum have always been at wits ever since the inception of Cardano. And in today's video, I want to cover Ethereum's merge to proof of stake, what Cardano is currently using to run their blockchain consensus, and compare it to Cardano and is it a Cardano killer? I know usually this channel is about Cardano and only Cardano, but there are things outside of Cardano that affect Cardano and definitely relate to Cardano, especially the number one right now smart contract based platform or blockchain, Ethereum, merging to proof of stake. It's a pretty big deal and it's definitely something to bring up when we're talking about Ethereum versus Cardano. So in today's video, we're talking about just that Ethereum's proof of stake merge. And this is interesting. I actually really enjoy that Ethereum is going to proof of stake. I think there's a lot here to be said um, about a lasting sustainable model. And proof of stake definitely to me is that model. I'm going to go over a little bit in this video, proof of stake versus proof of work. But first, I want to cover Ethereum's merge side and compare it directly with Cardano and contrast the two because it's not as nice and smooth as proof of stake on Cardano, at least in my opinion. And I'll let you make your own opinion by covering some of the facts and the things that are going on with this. First of all, the Ethereum merge is happening likely at a similar date. There's no confirmed dates for either of the Vasil hard fork for Cardano, which brings a lot of scaling to the Cardano network. Now, that's just interesting little fact here. Likely sometime in September is the expected merge date. And then we also have the fact that Ethereum staking is not all that you want it to be. At least I don't think it is. Um, inclusive accountability is something that Cardano really comes in and shines with. Um, with Ethereum, it's not like that. You have to have um, at least 32 Ethereum to activate your own validator. So basically, it's not that decentralized in the way it is structured to begin with. You need 32 ETH and a dedicated computer connected to the internet with some technical know-how um, to use this and make your own kind of solo staking. Now, you can also use other staking as a service protocols. We have these on Cardano too. They're known as software as a service or stake pools as a service. Basically, someone setting up stake pools for someone else. Um, but in this case, it is going to be you basically entrusting someone else um, to provide this service to, you know, they could definitely maliciously attack you. Same with Cardano stake pools. It's not the go-to, it's not the golden standard. And in this case, you still do need E30, 32 Ethereum down payment or deposit Cardano to run a stake pool. It's about 500 ADA. And to stake your Cardano, there's no minimums. And there's also no lockups. Basically, you need 60,000 Ethereum to be able to stake your own Ethereum and have it kind of your own little pot of gold and also be decentralized. In other cases, pretty much every single user is going to have to go with pooled staking, basically not native to the Ethereum network. Third parties are building these solutions and they carry their own risks. Or you're going to have to go with a centralized exchange, basically trading off the decentralization aspect and giving up your ETH to a centralized provider to make a larger pool and then, you know, distribute the rewards back to the people who are pooling smaller amounts of ETH into the large pool. The good thing is this still, although it's not the best, is a move to a more sustainable future for Ethereum. And I think that's great. I think that's awesome. But comparing it to Cardano and saying it's a Cardano killer is far from the truth. And I do not think at all in any way this is a Cardano killer. If anything, it's just going to show how well structured Cardano's proof of stake system has been since its inception. And that including the eco-friendly part for both blockchains being able to benefit from that, but also showing that maybe proof of stake would be better at a level of social consensus like Cardano has, where there's no minimums for how much you can stake. And really anyone can make their own stake pool to attract social, you know, social election for blocks that Cardano has, um, rather than just playing a big old game of who has the most money. Because in this system, the less decentralized something is and blockchains, it's not going to be a good thing. We want more decentralization. But in general, I don't see how this way of pooling stake together and having a proof of stake system is going to benefit decentralization and push for decentralization when it is such a high threshold to make your own node. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore. I now kind of want to transition over to Cardano 
proof of stake and why it is a lot different than Ethereum's proof of stake. As I mentioned earlier, first things first, Cardano, you never have to lock up your Cardano to actually stake it. It always stays in your wallet, it's self-custodied, and there's no minimums for how much Cardano you can stake. It's recommended you stake at least over like 10 Cardano, so the rewards outweigh the fees that you're going to basically ensue the one time you start staking because there is a deposit of two ADA and then the network transaction fee, but it's so minimal compared to 60,000 ETH that it's pretty much incomparable um, or it, in terms of how much easier and accountable the model that Cardano's proof of stake works on. Also, anyone can just go over, find a stake pool and click join, click their wallet of choice, build the transaction and start staking with them. It's one transaction, it's gonna happen within under a minute and then they can also elect who is going to mint blocks on the Cardano blockchain with their stake or with their amount of ADA and kind of up the odds of whoever they want to mint blocks on the Cardano blockchain. Just anyone can do that, any holder of Cardano and it's very, very put in a way which brings power to the people holding Cardano and the token that is native to Cardano ADA. Also, as you can see here, 72% because of this liquid staking feature of all Cardano of 33 billion is staked back into the network over a million 200,000 delegations. So a lot of people are using that power that they have earning passive Cardano on their Cardano and also securing the network at the same time. So a lot of great things come out of this model. The way it is incentivized to me is very good. And Ethereum definitely has room for improvement here. But not only that, Ethereum is just getting into the proof of stake kind of, you know, ethos and everything that goes with it. And similar to how Ethereum is the smart contract platform, it is going to have to catch up on the proof of stake side to Cardano. But Cardano last year, if you didn't already know this, launched smart contracts, you know, September. And now that position that Cardano was in where we're catching up to Ethereum smart contract capabilities and everything that they've done through smart contracts and deployed, Cardano is now creeping up on that front. Well, Ethereum now has to catch back up on the proof of stake side of things. Cardano has been in the proof of stake game and created a very good consensus mechanism for the protocol in general with Ouroboros. And Ethereum is just going to have to be able to either use this and build on upon it or create something else that incentivizes people to make the network more decentralized and secure. Proof of stake compared to proof of work includes a lot of benefits. Basically, rigorous security protocols are incorporated into proof of stake. Reduced centralization and the risk of centralization can be reduced in general just by issuing penalties for selfish practices within the network. Obviously, there's always going to be different ways around this and malicious actors trying to benefit or profit from any loopholes left in the network. But that's the point of governance. That's why Cardano has been building governance. Governance solutions can help combat that. Then we have energy efficiency, which applies definitely to Ethereum and definitely to Cardano. I'm happy to see that proof of stake is being adopted more, especially by a large platform like Ethereum, shine more light on it for Cardano and cost efficiencies in general. Proof of stake currencies are far more cost effective than operating on proof of work. Also, the APRs for staking your ETH versus staking your ADA are actually very similar. 4% is the current APR estimated for staking your ETH. And Cardano is around 3 to 4% right now as well. Used to be closer to 5%, but as things have slowed down and transactions have slowed down, rewards have diminished a little bit. But these things do adjust and go around the 4% mark generally over the past few years. So in general, I don't think that Cardano versus Ethereum proof of stake is really a big deal. I don't think Ethereum is going to kill Cardano just because it's moving to proof of stake and Cardano is also proof of stake. But I do think that Cardano does have the upper hand here on proof of stake and what they've built so far being a generally better accountability model for including decentralization and spreading people to create their own nodes and also allowing people to not lock up their currencies and keep it flowing through the system however they please um, and also being in their own custody so a lot of good things are going to be coming from ethereum's move to proof of stake but i do think they're gonna have to learn a lot from what cardano has researched and built over the past few years anyways that's it for today's video i'm excited for the merge honestly and i'm also very excited for the cardano Vasil hard fork so stay tuned if you want more news on cardano and cardano based things stake with jack stake pool if you want to and i'll see you guys in the next video it's been your friend jack peace out